Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, and for everyone who's been here for each of the three part series. Uh, appreciate all of you coming to learn um, and please let me know if you have any questions. So if you are new to how we run this, um, Kira Nyholm, she is, if you have your gallery view on, I think she's right next to me. Uh, she is my right hand woman. So if you have any questions, please feel free to DM them to her directly in the chat. Uh, you should be able to find her at the top under co-host, but if you can't sort that out, um, you can just write them in the chat and she will be directing it to me when the time is appropriate. So uh, super excited to be here to talk about Facebook and Instagram ads. It is something that is pretty vital when it comes to your marketing mix. Um, especially because Facebook and all of these other platforms have become very much a paid to play, which means if you're not giving them money, they're not really showing your things. So I'm excited to dive into this. I'm going to overload you with information. I'm also going to try to get through it as quickly as possible because I would like to give you a real time demonstration on how you can um, how you can set up an ad. So super excited. Please, once again, if you have any questions, uh, you can send them directly to Kira. She will be sending them to me when the time is appropriate. And uh, I will try to get through this as quickly as possible with the most amount of information as possible. So I'm going to share my screen. All righty. So this is um, Miller Business Center, Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns. Uh, quick agenda. We're going to go over who am I? I will do it briefly for everyone who has been here for the three part series. Uh, we're going to talk about business manager accounts, your audience, types of budget, budget you should have, the types of ads. And then I'm going to show you how to actually walk or I'm going to actually real time walk you through creating an ad. So real quick, who am I? I am Kelsey Stark. I'm the co-founder of Stark Media Group, which is a full service digital marketing company uh, based out of Riverhead. Uh, I graduated SUNY Albany cum laude with a uh, business administration degree, dual concentration in marketing and finance and a communications minor. I worked, I started my career in marketing in New York City, working for the Meredith Corporation. You may know them for Parent Magazine, Baby Magazine, Home and Garden. Uh, and then I decided to return home where I started a social media marketing agency with my business partner, which then grew to a full-blown digital marketing agency. So real quick sip it on who I am. So let's talk business manager account. Now, a lot of times when people uh, come to me with ads and they're, they're beginning, they say, yeah, no, I do ads. I hit the, I hit that button. I hit the, um, the boost button or the promote button and it breaks my heart. <laughs> Please do not do that. The reason why I'm saying that is because there is such a better way to uh, be able to use your media dollars to specifically target your audience, the people that you want to see this ad. Now, yes, by hitting the boost or the promote button, it does give you some types of parameters that you could put in, but it does not go as in depth as you will see today. So the very first thing you want to do is set up a business manager account. This is where you're going to be able to find uh, the different aspects and criteria that I'm going to speak about in today. So very, very easy to set up. Uh, you're going to go to business.facebook.com, click create account. You are going to be prompted to log in with uh, a Facebook account. Facebook account, make sure that you're logging in with the account that is associated with your business page. So you're going to enter in your name for the business. Um, it doesn't matter what that name is because you are the only person that is going to see that name and anyone else that you give access to it. So it is possible to add uh, different types of page roles, different people to have access, and then you can also add in partnership. So when you're walking through uh, the process, once again, it is fairly easy to create an account. Um, and then you're able to actually add in different type of partners and different uh, page roles for people who can either just see analytics, people who can control um, everything in its entirety, people who can only make ads or um, edits to ads. So there's lots of options as far as page roles are concerned. 
Um, but that's something that you can kind of deep dive with on your business creator account. You can also add in different pages. So for instance, our business manager is populated with multiple ad accounts, but also multiple pages. So business manager is a really amazing place, especially if you're having multiple people join in on an account to kind of have everything in one place, whether it's your ads um, or the pages you manage. And especially if you're managing multiple pages, business manager is amazing. Um, so that's real quick. The very, very first step is you want to have that business manager account. Oh, there we go. So next up, we're going to talk about audiences. Um, wow, there we go. Sorry, I'm just moving everybody's faces around. Um, okay, so there's different types of audiences when it comes to Facebook ads, and that's where we talk about I said it time and time again, and anytime you're talking to somebody about marketing, they're going to talk about your avatar, right? Your ideal clientele. Now, a lot of times when I am onboarding a client, I ask this question, who is your ideal client? And a lot of times I get, well, anybody who breathes, anybody who uses a credit card, anybody who's in my general vicinity. That's a beautiful response, but I can tell you it's the incorrect one. Not many times do I say there's an incorrect response, but that in fact is an incorrect response. The reason being, because of course we would love everyone to buy our products and services, right? But you have somebody that you know is your ideal client, that person that is going to not just spend money with you one time, but continue to spend money with you. And then not only that, they're going to end up becoming a brand ambassador because they love your product and service so much they're going to tell the world about it uh, about it and it's basically free advertising for you right so you want to think about your target audience facebook will automatically show your ads to the people who are most likely to find your ads relevant and then you can further target your ad with the three different audience selection tools so you have to think of all of these platforms right all of these social platforms whether it's facebook instagram LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, any of these platforms, they're all data collection agencies. Meaning every time you take an action on your account, liking something, commenting something, searching something as far as the like keywords, you are giving these algorithms information about you your online behaviors, what you like, if you've purchased something offline or online, which means several things. One, you like, you know, if you purchased, let's say a coffee mug offline, right? Or online. If you purchase a coffee mug online, one, it's going to tell me you like coffee. Two, it's going to tell me you like fun mugs. Three, it's going to tell me that you buy things online. So that's three pieces of information that I learned about you, right? They don't know your first name, last name, where you live, but they do know that you are male, female. If you do have it identified on your social platforms, they do know your age. They do know your approximate location due to your IP address. So these are all things that are collected. Now, I don't mean to freak anybody out, um, but just so everybody knows that this is how things are controlled. Um, you just, they're data collection agencies. And this is how Facebook is uh, able to target uh, your ideal clients with your Facebook ads. So there's three types of audiences and I'm going to go into uh, a tool that Facebook gives you. Um, uh, ooh, spacing on the name, but I have it open. Uh, audience insights. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to go over a tool called audience insights, which actually allow, will, sh will show you your target client, um, where they live on Facebook and the approximate amount of people that are on it. So three types of audiences are the core audience. Um, this is a def um, defined audience based on criteria like age, interest, geography, geography. I swear my mouth works today. Um, oh, and just so everyone knows, if you haven't been to one of these before, I am more than happy to send you this deck uh, when the, um, when the, presentation is finished. So I'll pop my email up there. And if you want to email me, I'm more than happy to send this to you, but please feel free to take as many notes as you'd like. Uh, okay. So your core audience is going to be that person that once we define your target uh, or your perfect client, right? Your ideal avatar, 
And I literally will draw a, a stick figure on a piece of paper and say, okay, who is this male, female? And if it's both, then I will actually draw two stick figures. Um, I will say, okay, what is his or her name? What's their job? Are they married? Are they single? Are they divorced? Do they have children? What do they like to do on the weekend? What is their occupation? Do they work in a corporation? Do they have a mom and pop? Are they a stay at home? What is it? And you want to get down to that nitty gritty because you'll see when we break down these different audiences, you can target on those particular things. And the reason why that's important is because you're now going to position yourself in a way that solves your target audience's pain points, their problems, whatever it may be, but you're also going to align yourself and put into these different criteria things that your target audience likes to do. For instance, I have a client that is a farm. They have a home delivery program. Within their home delivery program, uh, we were targeting mothers, right? We had Karen, we thought that that was appropriate. So Karen is, uh, is a mother. She's, we had two Karens. Karen, one was a busy mom who uh, had a full-time job, pushing forward in her career, but still really wanted to make it home in time to make food for her kids and spend dinner time with them. We also had the stay-at-home mom who liked to do yoga. She was head of the PTA and she um, really cared about feeding her kids food that was locally sourced. So this way they got the most amount of nutrients from it. So when we were creating content, we were thinking of those two women in mind. Now, when we went to put them into our target audiences, not only was I doing things like support local, farm, farm fresh, organic food, things like that. I was also putting things in like busy mom, yoga, Peloton, all of these different things, all of these hobbies that my ideal avatar might have. And that is one of the beautiful things about targeting with these Facebook ads, because every time one of these women fits into these criteria that I put in, busy moms, parent magazine, um, anything along the working mom, stay at home mom, um, any of those PTA, you know, all of those things that we put in as far as interests and criteria, Somebody has to fall into one of them to see our ad, but if they fall into multiple, they're going to be shown that ad multiple times because they're really, really pushing for what this ad is. So that's your core audience. Next is your custom audience. So your custom audience is going to happen on the second time around that you're trying to show someone uh, your uh, ad. For anybody who missed the first two, there's three phases of the marketing funnel. The very, very top is brand awareness. That is your biggest. Think of an upside down triangle, right? So the very, very top is brand awareness. That's when people literally just have to know that you exist in the world. The second layer, which is when people see that you exist in the world and they think that you have a product, product or service that they'll be interested in. Next up is the consideration phase. Consideration phase is where Someone thinks that they might need your product, they like your product, but they need to know more. They need to see testimonials, they need to see maybe a how-to video, or they just need to know more about your product or service. And then finally, we have the consideration phase, which is I'm ready to buy, but I might just need that extra push, right? So the custom audience is kind of in that middle range where with our core, our core audience, we got in front of the people that we want and no can um, benefit from our product or service or our business. Next up, we are gonna go with custom audiences. So this is going to be a retargeting campaign. So people who have engaged with your business um, online or offline, and uh, I will kind of briefly go over offline events, but somebody who is, let's say, engaged, like, commented, or shared your ad, we can also do it off of anybody who has engaged with your Facebook page up into the last 365 days, so the last year. Um, and then you can also cut it down uh, if you wanna do, let's say maybe the last month or the last week, people who have engaged within any of the posts on your account, maybe they have liked or followed your account. 
Uh, maybe they have gone in and commented on a picture, any type of engagement on your account, we're able to retarget those people. And the reason why you want to do that is because you're still top of mind, right? Those are warm leads. They're not cold leads. It's not just saying, hey, look, we're here. We exist. So people who have already interacted with you are going to be more likely to buy from you. Uh, we also have lookalike audiences, and that's also in the consideration phase. So when you're setting up these different types of um, interests, right, there's three, well, two phases of uh, when an ad actually runs. Within the first, um, we'll say about week, but it can go up to two weeks. Uh, when you publish an ad, it goes into what's called the learning phase. Now in the learning phase of an ad, well, first it goes into review, it gets approved, and then it goes into the learning phase. In the review, in the learning phase of the ad, Facebook algorithm takes all of the criteria that you have put in. So like I said, it was the mom who is 30 to 45 years old, who likes yoga, Peloton, organic food, farm fresh, right? So if there is somebody whose online behavior fits into those categories, they're going to be shown my ad. And what Facebook does is shows it to everyone who fits within those categories and the people who start interacting with the ad, maybe watches my video for a few more seconds, um, actually clicks on the link to go to where I want them to go, my call to action. They will take note of the commonalities between all of those behaviors, all of those people who are engaging. They'll take note of what they all have in common with their online behavior. Now that's how the algorithm processes who is most receptive to my ad? In which case they will take that information and they will find everyone else within my parameters that fit with those similar online behaviors. And then that's who they show my ad to. So that's the point of the learning phase. And I know this can get a little tricky. So basically you want uh, up into 50 actions that are taken on your post, whether somebody Oh, I'm sorry, on your ad, whether somebody clicks through to the link, um, comments on it, likes it, shares it, uh, walk, has a through play if you have a video, swipes through your carousel, whatever it is, up to 50 actions is what it takes to get out of that learning phase. And then the algorithm takes it and shows it to everyone who has interacted with those first 50 interactions. So your lookalike audience is saying, okay, these are, the, this was my core audience. This is my custom audience. Now I want people who are similar to my custom audience. I want to reach out to other people who don't quite fit into this criteria, but are similar to it. So you want to reach new people whose interests are similar to those of your best customers. Meaning if somebody, if I was selling coffee cups online and somebody clicked through to buy my coffee cup, right? Those people, they're going to take a look at their online behavior and show it to someone who has a similar online buying behavior because they're probably also interested in my coffee cup. So if you have questions, shoot them to Kira. I tried to explain it as layman terms as possible, but I know it can get a little tricky. Okay, so core audiences, you're going to go for uh, location. So you can advertise in cities, communities, countries, you can even go down to the street. So if you want just to target a singular street, um, let's say, you know, Main Street and Riverhead has a bunch of um, different businesses. So if you know that there's an area that you really want to target, you can target that specific area. Demographics, we can go with age, gender, uh, education, job title. There's so many different demographics that you can choose from. I will say that there is something called specialty ads. So that's for anybody who is in employment, housing. I will show you where that lives um, when I walk through the ads with you all. But those different specialty ads do not let you target uh, or hyper target, I should say. When it comes to location, you have to uh, target a pinpoint location and 15 miles around it. That is the only option. You can go more if you want, um, but at minimum, you can, you can only do 15 miles around that pinpoint location. Um, and then there's some other demographics. You cannot, when you, with these specialty categories, you cannot target age, you cannot target gender. 
Uh, and then there's some other things, but I'll explain that more when we walk through it so you can see it for yourself. Interests. So this is what I was talking about. Any interests, hobbies? Uh, these are not only the online behaviors that uh, people are taking with the content they're interacting with, but it's also going to take into account what you're posting, where you're checking in. So if I'm constantly checking into Planet Fitness um, and I'm liking and interacting with other, other type of fitness um, accounts, Facebook and Instagram are going to know that I am into fitness. So if somebody's running an ad for, let's say, a fitness course or there's a discount going on uh, with let's say a new band or a new weight or uh, a new nutrition, they're going to know that I'm fitting into that category. So I'm going to see their ad. Uh, behavior. So based on your prior purchases, uh, if somebody purchases, let's say um, a high-end piece of clothing offline, or I know um, I Googled a uh, specific type of curling iron and I did not follow through to purchase, but although it was, since it was in my cookies, I then started getting targeted with an ad for a different brand, but the same curling iron. I saw it time and time again, and guess who now has an, a new curling iron? I do. Um, so they saw that I Googled it, um, I clicked into the ads, and then I ended up purchasing it. So now, I'm since I purchased the curling iron, I'm now getting retargeted with ads for different sprays, for different um, uh, things that will protect my hair from heat, things that will make my bouncy curls last forever. So you get retargeted with ads from your prior purchases. Uh, and then also connections. So you can choose to target people based on if they like your Facebook page. You can also target people if they don't like your Facebook page. You can also um, target people of friends who like your Facebook page. So there's different types of connections that you can go to if you are looking to maybe break into a new market or go outside uh, of your immediate audience. Let's say maybe you want to uh, run a special for new members or new clients. You're probably not gonna wanna target the people who you've already been selling to because that may cause a little bit of a conflict. So you're gonna wanna say friends of people who like my page or people who don't like me, or I don't want to target people that like my page. So these are all possibilities. Next up, we have custom audiences. Custom audiences allow you to connect with people who have already shown interest in your business, whether they're loyal customers or people who have used your app or visited your website. So you can upload your contact list into Facebook um, using your either your email list or your CM, CRM um, software. And then if people uh, signed up or interact on Facebook with that email that you have integrated into those lists, uh, you can specifically target them. You can target site visitors uh, with a Facebook pixel. A Facebook pi pixel is a piece of code that you are going to paste onto each page of your website. Uh, you can do this yourself. Facebook does walk you through it and make it relatively easy and to do that. Um, you can also call your uh, web developer or web designer to paste that piece of code on there for you as well. Uh, and then this way you'll be able to target people who are on your website because Facebook can really only tell you the people who have clicked off of their platform to go to your website. Um, unless that Facebook pixel is on there, in which case they can tell you the entire customer journey of they went from your ad to your shop page, to your um, checkout page, to the thank you page for, you know, purchasing. And then also app users. Uh, if anybody here is a developer, um, and I'm not sure if anybody is, but you can um, target people on the use of your app. All right. So to create a custom audience, you're going to go to your audiences on your business manager account. If you already have uh, your core audience in there, you're gonna click the create audience dropdown and you'll see a selection for custom audience. If you don't have any of your core audiences in there, you'll only see the, the buttons to create an audience. So you'll have to 
create an audience, um, and then you can have the drop downs, right? So you can choose website traffic would just be an example. Um, if you wanted to create an audience to drive traffic to your website or for the people who have already uh, taken actions on your website, you're then gonna set a rule selection. So there are standard rules and pixel event rules. So what you can do is just a standard rule would be like they went and hit the, um, the call, call to action on your page. So maybe you have your phone number where they can click it and call directly. Maybe you have a little icon. Um, so those are standard rules. And then you have pixel rules, which are taking action on a page, adding something to a cart, things like that. And then you can add different rules as desired. Uh, and then you, after that, you want to add inclusive and exclusive rules. This is just a way to continue to narrow down your audience, especially when you are retargeting. You can have up to five total rules. Uh, in sections per audience. So this way you can say, I want somebody who went from this page to this page to the contact us and filled out my form, right? Okay, so the, that's how to make a custom audience. You can, the, you're can. you then going to give your audience a name. I like to get descriptive. So I don't wanna just say Stark Media Group, right? I'm going to say maybe um, business owners, within 15 miles of Riverhead with interests, because I'm gonna add in those interests too, right? Or I'll say, you know, custom audience for. And then you're gonna click create audience. And then once Facebook is done creating that audience, uh, you'll be able to select it during uh, the options when you're walking through your ad campaigns. Next up, we have lookalike audiences. So like I said that, those are the people who are, have similar online behaviors to your custom audiences or to your um, core audience. So lookalike audiences are a fast and effective way to connect with people likely to respond to your ads. All you need to do is create a source audience of people you know, your ads will then reach people with common interests and traits. So how you're going to do that is you're gonna to go to your audiences, select create audience drop down, and you're gonna to go to lookalike audience. You're gonna choose your source. Uh, it can be a custom audience um, or not created with your pixel data, your mobile app data, and your, or fans of your page. So you can choose any of these sources to create a lookalike audience. Uh, you do want to try to keep it of a usage to about 1,000 to 50,000. So think of the person who purchased from you the most and the person that continues to purchase from you uh, or to continue to sign up for your services because those are gonna be the people who are going to give you the highest lifetime value. They're probably going to start, if you have, um, let's say a tier of service, they're probably gonna start at an entry level service and then they'll buy the next tier and then the next tier and then the next tier. You know, this is great for somebody who has courses where you know they can come in on a basic level and then just move up to if you're if anybody on here is a coach of any source of any sort, um, you know you could start there and just continue up uh, with your different offers. So you want to really think about the people who are highly likely to purchase from you. Um, okay, and then you're going to choose the country or countries where you'd like to find a similar set of people. You can also break it down to states cities um, and continue to go down um, as broad or as niche as you would like. You're then going to choose your desired audience size. So how big of an audience are we looking for? Remember the bigger the audience, the bigger the budget. Uh, if, the, if you really start to niche down, um, you can get away with a smaller budget. If you have a very wide uh, and broad audience, you're gonna need a bigger uh, budget to reach all of these people effectively. You do wanna keep in mind, it takes anyone between seven to 21 times to see your brand before they can make an affiliation of who you are, what you do and the service uh, or, or offer that you provide. So you're gonna choose your desired uh, side uh, size and then you're gonna hit create audience. Um, do you take note that it could take up uh, to from six hours to 24 hours for your lookalike audience to be created. Uh, and your audience will refresh every three to seven days, um, which is 
as long as your ads remain active. So if you're using uh, that lookalike audience within an active ad, they will refresh every three to seven days. Um, so this way you can continue to be shown to people who fall within that category. All right, let's talk budget. The big, big question that everyone always asks me, how much should I be spending on my ads? Well, as of right now, um, it is kind of industry standard that 40% of your marketing budget is going to go to um, online ads, right? Onto digital ads. So within that 40%, and we are definitely seeing an increase of it, but that's those are kind of the, the last numbers that came out was that 40% of your ads, I'm going to say after the last year, it's going to pop up to anywhere between 75 and 80% of your ads should be online, uh, mainly for this purpose, because you can niche target um, so specifically <laughs> that it's, it's just a, a more effective way for your ad spend. So I want to talk about lifetime budget versus daily budget. So if you want a set it and forget it ad, where just something that is constantly running and you don't have to worry about it, that's going to be a daily budget. So you're going to say, I want to spend $20 a day is the default for the ad. So you can say, I want to spend $20 a day and I want it to start on this day. And then it will literally run until you decide to either go back in and turn it off or you can set a end date for it but with that said the daily budget will uh will take action uh to spend up to twenty dollars a day so if that means showing it to more people that means showing it to the same person multiple times because there's not a lot of people active on the platform uh it will spend Trust me, Facebook is very good at spending your money. It'll spend your uh, daily max per day on these different actions, whether it's impressions or anything like that. I am not uh, a big fan of daily budget, mainly because I like to work within specific budgets and actions that I want taken. So I usually set things up with a lifetime budget. Now, a lifetime budget, you have a very specific start and end date, um, also mainly because I know what day all of my ads end, so I know what days I need to re-up and make sure I have new ads running. In addition to that, with the lifetime budget, you can actually um, pick specific times that you don't want your ads to run. So, for instance, we know that our... Um, audience is not usually very active on the platform between, let's say, midnight and 5 a.m., right? We start to get some more traction on our profile around 5 a.m. So if my ad runs between midnight and 5 a.m., it's kind of a waste because the people that I need to see it aren't seeing it because they're sleeping. So I can choose with the lifetime budget to not have my ad run between midnight and 5 a.m. So that's one of the one of the main reasons why I like uh, choosing the lifetime budget over the daily budget. And then also with the lifetime budget, I can set um, a, an absolute, right? So I only wanna spend $800 on this ad over the course of the month. And I want it to start during this time and I want it to end at this time or this day. And I want it to end this day um, and I don't want it shown between 12 and 5. So you're able to control things a bit more with the lifetime budget. So my suggestion to you is if you are going to run multiple ad campaigns, which I do suggest you do, uh, once again, we're talking about those three levels, right? The brand awareness, the consideration, and the conversion. So 20% of your uh, online budget should go to your brand awareness. Once again, hey, I'm here. This is what I do. This is how I do it. This is what makes me special. Education, engagement, and audience building. That's what you want to focus on within your brand awareness. So that should be 20% of your total budget. 
60%, so the main meat and potatoes, is going to be your offer. So what are you offering? What is the service? What is the discount? What's the thing that's getting them through the door? I do recommend that you have some type of offer. Uh, I don't just recommend saying, hey, I make really great coffee cups, right? It should be um, buy one, get one, or you know, 10% off your first order of uh, $100 or more, whatever it is. Having that type of offer is going to get people through the door. They're going to, you're going to drum up a lot of interest. And then the last 20% should go to retargeting. So using those different um, audiences that I spoke about previously to retarget, because like I said, sometimes people just need that little extra push. I sure did when I was looking at the curling iron. I must have seen that ad every single day, sometimes up to four or five times a day, because me being a marketer and I knew exactly what was happening, I decided to take note of how many times I saw this ad. I saw not just that ad, but several ads up to five times a day for the course of a month. And I held out just to see when they would start to pull back on the ads, um, just because once again, that's, that's where my marketing brain went. So um, I actually waited it out and I saw it every day up to, up to five times a day, but sometimes only once a day for an entire month before they started to pull back on ads. And then I, uh, once I completed and I converted and I purchased the curling iron, that's when I started to get all of their different products and other offers, um, different bundle packages, things like that. So sometimes you just need to give people that extra push that says, hey, are you sure you don't want it? Look at, for my curling iron, it was look at these big bouncy waves. Um, and I just kept seeing all of these different women because they were trying to find out which one resonated with me with this beautiful wavy hair, beachy curls, tight curls, all of these different things. Uh, so sometimes you just need that extra push to get them to actually hit the buy now button. So that's what you want to think as far as your budget is concerned. There's also different types of ads. So there's three types of ads that you can create. You can do a single photo or a video which means it's going to be a, a solid um, graphic that you upload or a photo that you upload. It could be an actual video, like an MP4 uh, that you upload to your account, or you can make a slideshow. And Facebook does actually give you some tools. They've added it in, I, I believe it was last year, maybe it was a year and a half ago, um, that they added in tools where you can create slideshows, and you can create videos directly on the app. And the reason why they're doing that is because video ads do exponentially better than every single one of these other ads. So if you can make a video ad, uh, I know a lot of people worry about production value and things like that. Uh, I totally understand. So if you can maybe just make a slideshow, if possible, um, but I do recommend the ads that perform the best are if you are in front of the camera talking about your brand, showcasing your product, um, talking about your service, whatever it is, those types of ads do exponentially better. And for those of you out there saying, well, I don't have the budget to hire a team, if anybody has one of these, a cell phone, uh, especially of the Apple variety, but Android's really good too. The cameras on those phones are phenomenal. So we, you know, you can use that if you have a um, uh, iPad. iPads were one of the first things that we used to start creating our videos and the picture quality is great on that. So, and there's different free platforms. InShot is a great platform to edit your, um, your videos in. So that's InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T, InShot. Um, you can also edit them on Canva. I talk about Canva a lot. I love Canva. C-A-N-V-A.com, Canva.com. There is a free version of it. Um, I always like to give everyone free tools, but if, you, if you're interested in some paid tools, I can also give you those as well. Uh, just ask Kira and I will answer that question later. 
Uh, so Canva is also a, a great way to edit your videos. Uh, if you have an iPhone or any Apple products, there's iMovie. Uh, in addition to that, if you tell me, Kelsey, there is no way I am getting in front of a camera. Absolutely not. Um, I don't have time to record. This is not a camera phase. I'm not comfortable with it. Um, I'm going to tell you, you're beautiful. Get in front of the camera. It's the best way to, um, to connect with your audience. But if you're saying no way, it's not happening. Um, Pexels does have videos that are uh, licensed for personal and commercial use. So Pexels is P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. Pexels dot com has photos and videos uh, that are, um, like I said, licensed for commercial use. So you don't have to worry about any type of legalities on that end. Um, but definitely useful to make when it comes to ads, if you don't have the time to go out there and create something, but I will say authenticity is absolutely key when it comes to, uh, any type of content that you're creating. So the more that it can be you or anybody within your company, uh, who's representative of your brand that is going to sell the most because people are going to connect with you. I say it all the time. People no longer are connecting with the Nike check from uh, Nike. From Nike. <laughs> um, they are connecting with the runner who's wearing the Nike check or the basketball player or the softball player. Uh, any, people want to connect with people, not just brands anymore. Uh, so they are going to align way more than, with that than with anything else. So if you can put some of your own photos and videos up, if you personally or anybody who's representing your business can get in front of the camera, that is going to work best for your ads. Uh, but if you're telling me no way, no how, it's not happening, uh, there are some other services that you can use to use stock photos. So next up, we have carousel, carousel ads. Easy to say, right? Um, so that is uh, anybody who has seen when there's multiple dots on a post, or you could just swipe through. Those are called carousels. Think of, you know, kind of a carousel going around in circles. So those are called carousel ads. Now, uh, I'm gonna come back to this. So the, the third one is a collection ad that is for mobile only. So there are studies out there that show most people consume uh, most social media on their mobile device. It is, you know, the highest consumption flat or um, device. So if you're looking to have a more interactive experience uh, and you want people to target people on mobile, you can do collection ads, which when you create your ad, they will see the initial image or video. And when they click on it, it will actually swipe up into think of kind of like a landing page where you can put multiple photos, you can do several call to actions and you can have more information. But once again, that is only on mobile. Okay, so I'm going to rank these ads for you. So like I said, number one, video ads. Video, 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 video does the best on every single platform. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, video content is huge. It has the highest retention rate um, and the uh, highest engagement rate. Next up is going to be carousel ads. And I'm gonna say carousel ads with a caveat. If you choose to do a carousel ad, you want to have three images or 10 images. Those are the two um, criteria that was founded, performed the best. So if you're doing a carousel ad, you want to do a carousel ad with three images or a carousel ad with 10 images. They found ones that were in between or were only two images did not perform as well as if it was three images or if it was 10 images. So I just want you to keep that in mind um, as far as optimization is concerned. Next up is going to be the collection ads. It is an interactive experience. So you do get a lot of engagement on those ads and you're able to keep them on your platform or on the Instagram platform, which Instagram absolutely loves. 
Um, and you are able to have several call to actions and just basically give more information to people. So you're getting more out there. You're in front of their face for longer. And then finally, it's the single photo ad would be uh, the lowest ranking of, I mean, I guess you could call it the four. Okay. Alrighty. So um, I'm going to get some stuff ready. So Kira, if you want to shoot me over, if there's any questions so far, um, let me open up my Mac. Okay. So Kira, uh, if you want to shoot me over those questions that have been asked and then other wise i'm going to move on to showing you how to actually create an ad um and then the audience insights i was talking about previously all right so i'm gonna go over audience insights oh just kidding it is so quick i love it Okay, let's move this coffee out of the way before it ends up everywhere. So Evelyn asked, does this work with recruiting ads? Okay, so Evelyn, uh, if you could unmic and let me know, uh, what do you mean by recruiting ads? Is this a job position that you're looking to fill? You're spot on, Kelsey. That's exactly what it is. Okay, wonderful. Um, yes, you can run ads for employment. Employment is one of those special categories that I spoke about previously. So it does not allow you to target as specifically um, as some of the other ads, but you can, um, you can push employment. We have done this successfully for several clients. And what basically what it does is it narrows down the parameters. So you cannot target based on gender. You cannot target based on age when it comes to uh, employment ads. You can target on specific location, but it has to be up to 15 miles. So for instance, if we were going to run a, uh, a, job, um, a job ad, then we would have to do Riverhead plus 15 miles around us. And then there's only certain criteria within the demographics that you can uh, target for. And mainly that's to make sure that you are staying within Facebook's guidelines of uh, inclusion and making sure that you're not discriminating against anyone who could potentially um, maybe not fit within your criteria, but they don't want them to be excluded. Um, does that make sense? It does. Thank you very much, Kelsey. Perfect. I'm glad. Um, okay. Keith asked, how would you target educational clients? Um, okay, Keith, if you could unmic, what type of educational clients are we talking about? Is this a tutoring service? Is this a coaching service? What are we looking for? So it's, uh, it's really in the tutoring um, space, but it, it also goes into the coaching area. So like, for example, athletes who want to get a, a scholarship to a school, it's sort of like the one who wins lottery, right? They, a year later, they're broke. Same thing with the guys who get scholarships for you know sports. They end up putting all their time into the sport and not into their studies. So they need an academic coach as well. Okay, great. Um, so this is going to be kind of two parts because one, you are going to want to target the student themselves, uh, that student who is going for athletics is obviously very driven. Um, same with somebody who's looking for a scholarship in the educational field or not education, but, um, through academics is going to be very driven. So you want to have one area to speak to them. The other person you're gonna target though is going to be the parent of that child. And the reason why that is important is because it's most likely the parent that is going to be hiring you and paying for, um, and paying for your services. So I would target obviously a uh, age range which is most common for 
uh, adults with children in high school. Uh, so we're, I think you're probably looking sophomore to senior age. So I would kind of do some backtracking of what the approximate age range of their parents would be. Uh, if you are doing virtual now, I may just, depending on your budget, look for certain areas uh, that you want to specifically target. I'm trying to think. I You could target around schools, but parents usually don't do drop-offs at that age, but I guess some of them do. They might pick up. So you could target around that. Um, so looking at location, you want to target around maybe schools that have uh, really great sports programs if you're doing virtual or, of course, if you are um, if you're in one area and you're doing face to face, you, you want to do it around whatever you're comfortable with traveling in. But I would look at if you're going to do virtual, find those schools that have phenomenal sports programs and that their parents may need to, you know, obviously they're living in that vicinity around the school because they have to qualify for the school. Um, there, and then you can target around there and then their parents will see it and you would position yourself in a way of, um, you know, are you looking for college prep for your child? Do, is your child an awesome um, athlete? Make sure academics aren't following behind. Because a lot of times, especially parents, parents of busy kids, busy parents, don't think about that until you put it in their head. So a lot of times when I'm making content and I'm making ads, I want to think, okay, my client or my ideal client doesn't know what they don't know. So it sometimes may take you putting it in their face, like, hey, is your a kid, is your kid a rock star athlete? What's going on in the classroom? And then that parent might see that and say, oh, what is going on in the classroom? I don't know. Let me check with Tommy over here and see how his grades are. So the, that would be the way that I would position that. So go for the age range of parents that are going to have, um, are going to have children within that age bracket. I would then also think about what does that parent do? What are their hobbies? What are their weekend activities looking like? Because those are the interests that you're gonna fit in. So you don't want to be with these interests and these targeted demographics, you don't want to be so completely on the nose. Yes, of course, you want parent, PTA, um, you know, child athlete, whatever these things are, right? But you want to think outside the box. Do they own a home? Okay, so maybe they're looking at mortgage, refinance. Um, college recruiters, things that are outside of what their, what your initial offer is. Um, if you're looking for somebody, maybe you have a higher spend offer. Maybe you're looking for somebody who's in a higher um, tax bracket. You want to put in things like Forbes, um, investments, stock market, because that, that parent's online behavior is going to fall into those categories, not just their kids. So think about the person that you're targeting outside of your actual offer. Does that make sense? Very much so. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Um, okay. Mark asked, will this work for a product as well as a service? Um, you mean ads? Mark? Yes. That's what I mean. Hi, Mark. I guess Hello. <laughs> Um, yes, this will work for both products and services. Uh, you know, we provide services. Uh, we provide different uh, services within the agency here. So we run ads for ourselves. Uh, we do also run products. Products, I almost feel like, are a little bit easier to push on ads because you can show them exactly what the product is, how to use it. You can show it um, in real life being used. Uh, and then you can also have the direct purchase on these different platforms now, right? Facebook and Instagram allow you to direct purchase on the platform. Service side, you usually have to direct them to either a landing page, to a contact us page, something like that, where they can reach out um, unless you have some type of package program where they can direct to cart um, and push out from there. So uh, I would say ads are stellar for e-commerce, but also really, really good when it comes to services. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Wonderful. You're welcome, Mark. 
Um, Alicia asks, what is select an event with value? Okay, so when you're talking about events, it's events that are happening on your page. So, and you can also assign a value to that. So if somebody is clicking through the pages of my website, that's considered an event. Each page they go to is considered an event. So if somebody is going to my homepage, where maybe I'm directing them to the homepage and then they go to the contact us page and they fill out my form, that is a high value event for me because that means that they are a warm to hot lead. They're very interested in what I'm offering and they want to learn more and they want to connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, which is usually where I can then pitch the sale, right? Most people, uh, unless you have a product, if you have a service business, you need people to come to you in order to pitch the sale, right? And a lot of times that happens even with products. You want people to come to you and then maybe you can upsell them on some things. You can bundle things together. Um, but regardless, that is considered a high value event for me. If somebody goes from the homepage to let's say the about us page or the examples of my work page, those are also considered high value, but not as high value as them um, filling out the form. So we're talking, when we say events, we talk about the actions that are being taken. So is somebody actually clicking on my ad and performing the action that I want them to take? Are people just kind of passively scrolling through my ad or are they passively scrolling through my website? So those are the different types of events. Okay, Richard asks, can this be set up for multiple campaigns with different targets? So when it comes to the ads, you can set up multiple campaigns. So you have campaigns, next up is ad sets, and I'll show this uh, a little bit more specifically when I go actually into the creation of the ad. So you have ad campaigns, then you have ad sets, and then you have the actual ad. So it's three parts. So it goes big to smaller to smaller. So the ad campaign is, let's say I'm pushing, you know, I'll just continue on with my coffee cup example, right? So I have my coffee cup example. That is my ad campaign. And then I maybe have three ad sets within my ad campaign. One would be for brand awareness of people just wanting to know that my ad exists in the world or that my coffee cup exists in the world. The second one being, I need to finesse people, let them know why my coffee cup is great. Maybe it keeps, um, it keeps the coffee hotter for longer. And then finally, my third ad is to, uh, to push the sale. And then when you switch over to the actual ad, then you are going to target those specific due to whatever the ad is. So if you are in the brand awareness, you're going to do the core group. And then if you're in the consideration or the conversion, you can do those lookalike audiences um, and those different types of audiences I spoke about previously in order to retarget. But it, the, I like that they set it up like that because I can see like, okay, my brand awareness for this ad is doing phenomenal, my conversion, not so much. So what needs to happen in the consideration fees in order to connect the two? Does that make sense? Well, actually, um, what I'm looking for is I have a, a directory website and I need one ad to try to get people to sign up into the directory and then another set of ads to get people to that directory. Okay, so yeah, you're talking about a brand awareness and a conversion. So what you can do is you can set up two different campaigns or within that one campaign, you can set up two different ads and two different ad sets. So one would be the brand awareness and one would be straight to the directory. Got it? I think so. Okay, well, so hopefully I'll be able to break it down for you a little bit more when I'm actually setting up the ad. Um, and you can feel free to unmute and let me know if, if I can kind of um, guide you a little bit there. Um, okay, so Karina asked, as per your experience with clients, how much traffic would increase to a business website when ads are done in Facebook and Instagram? Do you have any 
soaps, candles, and bath bomb clients. So none that are specific to um, just doing soaps, candles, and bath bombs, but we do have uh, some clients that actually the farm client I was talking about before does do delivery of some of the soaps and bath bombs um, and other types. So um, how much traffic would increase a bit to a business website? So Karina, if you don't mind unmuting and just letting me know, do you mean what is the, the amount that you need to drive in order to convert? Oh, Karina, you're still muted, love. Nope, still muted. <laughs> Hold on, I just asked you on mute. Got it. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Thank you for everything. Um, just I'm trying to bring more people to my website. Um, just I kind of stuck. I don't know what how to do it. You are explaining, and I say, oh my gosh, he's taking so much time. How much would cost me to pay you <laughs> to do it for me? <laughs> because it's it's a kind of challenge. It is you know time consuming to prepare the the products. It's everything handmade by me. And I have to make sure that it's perfect for my clients. The thing is, uh, get everything done in Facebook and Instagram. And it's, it requires time, and I kind of know what to say and falling up. So, how much would create, like, if I pay you to do it for me, okay? okay. How much would it cost me, and how much? I should, uh, how much um, my sales would increase if someone who is professional do it for me? Gotcha. Yeah, so there's a few things that come with that. So you have, so you're, you're basically asking about ROI, return on investment, right? How much do I have to put in and how much can I get out? Which is a common question and, you know, we get it. I totally understand. The thing with online sales is I can't guarantee you anything, right? All I can say is these are the um, these are the results I have I've had in the past. This is our game plan. This is um, what we can do for you to increase your sales. One thing I do want to stress: if you run one ad and you don't get the results that you're looking for, do not quit. So many times people say, "Well, I ran the ad for a month and I didn't get anything, so that's it. I'm done." You have to keep in mind, once again, seven to 21 times, people have to see you, your brand message, your product, your service, what you're offering in order to convert. Not only that, Facebook needs to find your perfect audience. So the more ads you run with these core audience, with these core groups, with these different types of custom audiences and lookalike audiences, the more information Facebook and their algorithm is going to be able to collect on the people that are purchasing from you, uh, their online behavior, the different people that are engaging with your product. Like I said, I let my, that curling iron ad, I let it run for a month and I was still getting targeted every single day, multiple times a day. Now, granted, this was a big um, worldwide company and they had a massive budget, but you have to continually hit the person over and over and over and over again until you finally get them to sell. This is why I say client acquisition is extremely more expensive than client retention, meaning to gain a client, to get someone to actually purchase from you is going to take a lot of money. Then once you finally get them to purchase, to it'll cost you less money to try to get them to purchase again is what I'm saying. So, and especially if you have a perfect, like not a perfect, but a, um, a great service or a great product, they're more likely to purchase from you again. So you are going to have to spend quite a bit of money up front in order to get them through the door in order to get them to you. And then, um, and then when it comes to fostering the relationship after that, that is going to be cheaper than the, the original pull in. But um, Karina, if you want, reach out to me and uh, we can discuss because depending on, once again, your, your size of the person you're trying to target, um, soaps, candles, bath bombs, I'm going to say that it's probably females within like the 
30 to 50 range um, because these are things that are do require a little bit of spending money, right? Um, and people who enjoy, let's say, massages, facials, spa days, um, working out, right? They care about each other, they care about themselves. Uh, maybe you want to focus on people who um, like organic foods, anything like that. Um, those are the types of targets that you're going to want to put in to these ad campaigns. So like I said, kind of we were talking before about the tutoring, you don't want to be so on the nose of just saying candles, soaps, bath bombs. Yes, of course, you should include that. But think outside of it. Um, you know, maybe some one of these, one of the criteria could be Tony Robbins or anybody who uh, focuses on mental health, right? Because soaps, candles, and bath bombs could be a relaxing thing. Maybe it's somebody who's really focused on beauty products. So you're going to put in things like Ulta, Sephora. So people who shop on those websites are also going to want to see your product. Um, but we can connect offline uh, talking about, you know, how much cost would be in order uh, to try to acquire those clients. But does, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so next up, we are going to go to audience insights. Oh, I have to share this with you. Okay, so here is audience insights. Uh, this is where um, you can learn all about your audience and their online behavior. So as you can see here, when you go to your audience insights, um, you can choose an audience to start with. So if you want, if you're looking for um, really your target audience and where, who they might be and what they might be interested in, um, you can go for everyone on Facebook. If you're looking to maybe do some retargeting uh, or you just wanna see about the people who have already connected with your page, you can click people who've connected to your page. Uh, so let's just go for everybody on Facebook. So as you see here, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend some time on this, but not too much. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, but I wanna make sure that I'm also able to walk through creating an ad with you all so you can see exactly how to do it. So as you can see here, uh, you can change your location. Uh, you can talk about age and gender, put in those interests I was talking about, the connections being like, do they like your page, or sorry, um, people who are connected to your page, people who are not connected to your page, people who are connected to other pages. So if you have a competitor, you can say people connected to your competitor's page, you can put that all in here. Um, so you are also, let's, so we'll just walk through it real quick. So let's say, oh. I was typing on my laptop and not on my computer. <laughs> so let's say here, uh, we are going to go Riverhead, right? Riverhead, New York. So now I can see here and, oh, did that go in, right? Yeah, okay, so this changes. So we can see here the demographics of people who are in Riverhead, New York. Uh, you have your bulk between ages 25 to 34, mostly skewed male, but pretty almost even on the male to female. Uh, you can see here that most of them are single. Uh, these blue ranges um, are going to be the actual numerical value. The gray is the uh, overall statistic, right? So, oh, sorry. So this is, so if you click on it, it does um, kind of add it into your category. So this is the way that you can continue to narrow down and uh, see your different types of audiences. So I'm gonna go back. Oh. Does what I wanted to do. Yay, technology. <laughs> okay, so here we are. We're back. Um, okay, so from people on, oh, we're gonna, there we go. So from all the people on Facebook, you can see here um, that 28.5% of Facebook users 
are single, but in the Riverhead area, 39% are single. So that's what these uh, blue boxes, as opposed to the gray boxes mean. So there's 37% more people single in Riverhead than in the average of everyone on Facebook. Now, you also have to keep in mind that is a very uh, large range. So we can talk about location. Uh, let's say I want to target ages 30 to, let's go to 50, 30 to 50. So you will see that these continue to change as you alter the, uh, as you alter the different dynamics. Um, maybe I want to say that they have a college education, college or higher education. Um, I can say that they have, um, you know, put in CEO, different types of job titles. Uh, or if you want to say maybe like we'll do plumber. No, that's not dropping down. Okay. You can put in different types of job, uh, job titles, politics. You can target people uh, based on their political views. Um, that is not something I'm going to get into. Uh, you can see parents. So uh, my, my tutoring friend, if you're still here, uh, you know, we're going in this 13 to 18 range. Uh, we should probably change where's relationships out of this there we go all right so right now we don't have any within um all of these criteria so you can see as you break down how niche you want to get or how broad you want to get so let's see how many people are married interesting oops there we go. So that's the other intriguing thing about this is you can see people who have been married three months, six months, and this is going to depend on when they change their relationship status. Uh, so it's really fun to play around in here, but also keep in mind that people have to fill out this information. So the reason why it probably came up with nobody before uh, is because they don't have their um, their child connected to their family. I don't know if you guys see on Facebook, you can add like spouse of um, this person is my son, this person is my cousin, this person is my uncle. So those are the ways that you can try to find if they're in within if they're in that specific area. Cause I can tell you right now, there's definitely people between the age of 30 and 50 that have children uh, in Riverhead. So you can play around in here and see your different types of audiences. Uh, so you can know how to specifically narrow down uh, your demographics and how you want um, to target people in particular based on these different categories that they gave you over here. Okay, so who is ready to build an ad? So first up, this is business manager. This is um, what you can see on the back end. So I'm going to go into business manager. Oh, I have one up already, perfect. So when you go into your ads, um, if you're looking at your ads, I usually like to go to lifetime, otherwise it'll default to the last seven days. You can do the last month, the last two weeks, whatever it may be, or you can put in a custom time frame to see, but I usually like to just put lifetime so I can see um, how my ads are delivering. So this is your where you are going to create your ads. Um, Rich, this is what I was talking about with the ad campaigns. So here, um, just gonna make this a little bit bigger. You have your ad campaigns, your ad sets, and then your ads. So these are the three different categories. So if I have one campaign, I can have two ad sets and then an ad per ad set. So let's say, oh, I don't know. Hold on, give me one second, because I actually, 
can change to something that has multiple ad sets. So one of the reasons why uh, it would be advantageous to run several ad sets is you could do something called A-B testing. And think back to, I want to say, the um, when you were in school and you had to do the science fair, right, the scientific method. So you want to think of two ads that are similar but different, and you're going to test them. So maybe they have different photos. Maybe they have different captions. There's uh, different call to actions. There's something about them that is different. And you're going to run them simultaneously against each other and see which ad performs the best. Why this is important is because you will be able to learn more about your target audience. When it comes to marketing, we may think that we know what our target audience wants to see, but it's not always the case. I'll give you a real world example. We were running ads for a, um, for a real estate agent. Every single time, we ran an exterior photo against an interior photo. I could have sworn that that interior photo, the one of the really clean kitchen or the super cozy fire was going to perform better. I was proven wrong every single time we ran those ads. Every single time the exterior photo won. So from then on out, we knew when we were creating content and we were creating ads, we needed to do exterior photos. We then ran another A-B test, whether we did drone photos, so kind of bird's eye view, or straight on photos. The drone photos, the bird's eye view, worked better every single time. So every ad that we ran after that was a bird's eye view or a video of the house, because I know that the uh, specific audience we were trying to target liked those ads the best. So I'm going to want to play to what they like the best, right? So that's one of the reasons why A-B testing is uh, really, really useful to really kind of perfecting the content that your audience likes to see. So, um, so here we have our ad campaigns, right? I didn't even see which ad I selected. Okay, so you, you want to pick your ad campaign. So here we go. All right. So we chose our ad campaign, right? And that's what the topic of the ad is gonna be about. Next, you're gonna have your ad sets. So these are my two different ads. And when you click into them, since these are both completed, uh, you can actually see which one won, which I'm gonna say is this one. Yeah. So within your ad campaign, you can have multiple ad sets. So uh, for my um, rich, rich, sorry, what, what you said it was a directory, right? Yeah, it's a, uh, a directory site. So I need one set going after people to join the directory and other people to use the directory. Okay. So here's how you would set it up. So your campaign would be the directory, right? Your different ad sets would be um, brand awareness and conversion. And then you would make your ads within each one of those ad sets. So this would be the one for brand awareness and then your ad set and the other one would be conversion. All right, Is that, does that make more sense now that you see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's create an ad. So when you hit this green button, create, uh, oh, sorry, it's because I'm in this. Get out of these. So when you hit create, this is going to be the first thing that pops up. Now, if you want to run a similar ad to one that you have used previously, you can use existing campaign, but for the purposes of this, um, of this talk, I'm just gonna go with create new campaign. Now, here are your different objectives. Can, you have uh, awareness, which is just getting the word out there. You have consideration, which is, um, you know, that second tier of giving people some more information. And then you have conversion, which is uh, actually getting people to purchase. Uh, you can put the pixel on the thank you for purchasing page that is on your e-commerce site. Um, and that will 
register here. So as, e as nice as it is to see these really, really big numbers when it comes to brand awareness and reach, and I will um, explain the difference between the two, I try to stay away from this first column. And the reason why I try to stay away from this is first off, in my brand awareness phase, when, somebody, when I approach someone and say, hey, I'm Kelsey and I own a digital marketing company, there's about three to 15% of people who are gonna say, oh my gosh, great, I've been looking for a digital marketing company, how can I contact you? Right. So there's about three to 15% of people in any industry that are looking for exactly who you are, what you do, and you have the exact thing that they need. So they're going to be ready to convert right away. Not everybody goes through those three stages. So with the brand awareness and the reach, it's kind of more front facing. I like to have a more purpose driven ad, right? If I'm going to put money behind something, I want it to be purpose driven. So you can do brand awareness and reach. Reach means, um, you know, the largest amount of people. Brand aware awareness is more along the lines of how many times it is seen. So I try to stay away from that column. But if you are working from somebody who just likes to see really, really big numbers, that's where you're going to get um, your highest numbers in that brand aw awareness and reach. I like to hang out in this area for most of my ads. Um, traffic is if you are going to send them specifically to a website, to an in-app, um, you can do in-app installs. Engagement is getting people to uh, like, comment, share. So your ad will be shown to people who are most likely to like, comment, and share on that ad. If you want to do something that is video views, if you've made a really rocking video, and you want to target people who are going to watch that video, you can uh, choose video view views. Lead generation is creating a form that people fill out directly on the app that then gets uh, sent to you. So it could be something like, um, you know, give us a reason, a way to contact you for a quote, or if you're interested in a quote, fill out this form. So keeping people on the app, not Taking them away from the app is something that these platforms all love. Like I said, they are just data collection agencies. So they want to keep you on the platform as long as possible to learn more about you. But also, uh, it, the more steps you have somebody take, the more likely they are to drop off unless they're really, really passionate about your product. Sometimes that's really great. Sometimes that's not. Sometimes people want someone who's like ready to go and that's that. Um, other times, people want to find out who needs a little bit more finessing. You can that you can also send people uh, into your DMs, try to get them to direct message you. And then like I said, conversion, these, and also if anybody ever wonders, you can uh, hover over the eye and it'll tell you um, what each thing means. But conversion is essentially trying to get people to direct purchase or go directly to your store. Uh, I like to play around in this area, like I said. So if I'm making a really rock star video, maybe I want to do video views and I want to target people who are going to watch uh, three seconds or more or maybe 15 seconds of my video. Because if you're watching my video for 15 seconds, you're intrigued. Three seconds is about average for people. Uh, so maybe I want to start with video views and then I want to do a retargeting campaign with those different lookalike audiences and custom audiences that then drives traffic to my website that uh, so people can learn more. But just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna do traffic, right? So once you hit, you choose your objective, you're going to be able to name your campaign. Now, don't worry if you skip, if you hit continue right away, you can go back and change these. Um, but this is what, what we were just talking about with your campaign, your different ad sets, and your ad. So I can say our campaign is Miller Business. The ad set is um, Women's Expo. And the actual ad is going to be Facebook and Instagram ads. Now, once again, nobody is going to see these names except for you and anyone that you give access to your account. So from here, I'm going to hit continue. 
And this is going to bring me to the page where I can create my ad. Now, this is the special categories that I was talking about. Um, so to my friend who asked about um, employment, as you can see here, you are required to declare if your uh, ad is about credit, employment, housing, social issues, elections, or politics. Um, if you are doing elections, politics, or social issues, you do actually have to register with Facebook. Uh, this all happened and came about after um, not this past election, but the election before that. Uh, so I literally had to send in my driver's license to uh, Facebook in order to run ads for these three particular topics. Uh, and if you toggle that on, you do have to declare which ad or which type of ad you are choosing. And that will define which types of um, targeting you can do. So as you can see, uh, housing does have to do with real estate listings. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of don't believe that that should be in there, but unfortunately we don't make the rules. Facebook does uh, really anything that has to do with loans or opportunities or you're gonna find within these special ad categories. Uh, so just something to take note of, but this is not targeted in a special ad category. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that toggled off. Uh, your campaign objective is traffic. We talked about that. And you can um, put a campaign spending limit because I like to do lifetime ads. Uh, I don't necessarily feel the need to do campaign spending limit. If you add a campaign spending limit here, your ad will automatically turn off once you've reached that limit. So if you're gonna do uh, a daily ad and you don't really want to um, put an end date to it. So if you wanna do a daily budget ad, but you don't wanna put an end to it, but you also don't wanna get a bill for you know $4,000 that you forgot about, you can say, I only wanna spend up to $1,000. So that ad will run up until you spend the $1,000 and then the ad will automatically get shut off. Uh, A-B testing, this is what I was talking about when it comes to running two ads simultaneously uh, with each other to test to see uh, what type of ad runs best. You can do creative. You can also test different types of ad sets. So if you wanted to try to test your core audience versus the lookalike audience that Facebook provides, you are able to do that as well. Campaign budget optimization basically means when you set your, uh, your budget for this campaign, if you click this to on, if a, a per certain aspect of your campaign is performing better than other aspects of your campaign, it'll allocate more money towards that campaign over the other campaigns. So it's basically just giving Facebook the opportunity to adjust your budget um, and the allocation of the money that you've set aside for the for your ad uh, ad spend to the campaign that's performing best. So that's what that means. So once we've filled all this out, we're going to go to next. So since we decided to choose traffic, you can drive traffic to a website, you can drive traffic to an app, to your messenger, to your WhatsApp. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, WhatsApp is owned by Facebook. Uh, so is Instagram, which is why um, you can run these two ads simultaneously. You can also choose to only run your ad on Facebook. You can choose to only run your ad on Instagram, um, but it's really dependent on you. You can see over here that it does give you your audience definition, whether it's specific, it's broad, or in the middle. And it gives you an estimated daily reach. Now, this isn't always factually accurate. Of course, it is an estimate. And this is just based on people who have run ads similar to yours, similar to your industry, and similar to uh, your audience. So as we add in different types of budgets, different types of audiences, you'll see that this this number is going, whoop, this number is going to change. Dynamic creative uh, gets a little interesting. Uh, I don't wanna overwhelm you too much, but dynamic creative allows you to have different, um, different photos, different videos, different captions. It allows you basically to make 
several pieces of content on your ad. And then essentially what Facebook does is it will kind of mix and match them together to see which ad combination performs best. And then they will take the money and put it towards that. Um, so it will, so you're going to upload, I think it's up to 10 different captions and 10 different photos and Facebook will basically mix and mingle them uh, into all different combinations and you can see which one's performing great. Okay, and then uh, creating an offer will actually give you a button on your ad that says get offer. So if you're if you're running specifically, you know, a 15% off or something like that where you want people to sign up right away, um, you can choose that as well. So here we talked about the daily budget and the uh, lifetime budget. So if you want to change, you just hit this drop down and you go to lifetime budget. As you can see here with daily budget, you do have an end, you can set an end date for a date and time, but you do not have the option to change the scheduling of the ad. So you can see this is kind of grayed out right here. So if you switch this over to a lifetime budget, you'll have a start date, you'll have an end date. Um, you will get a flag if your start date is um, prior to the time that you're presently in. So if you're going through this and you can set it up really quickly and get it out relatively quickly, this will be fine. But if uh, you kind of leave and come back to it, uh, you will see that you'll get a flag at the end and says that your start date is in the past. So usually if I'm sitting down to make my ads, I like to put it um, a few hours into the future. So I give myself some time. So once I change that, that error sign goes away. So you can choose your start date and your end date. I recommend to run your ads for at least a month at very, very minimum two weeks, but at least a month is what I recommend running an ad for before you change it. Mainly because once again, it is going to go into that learning phase. Uh, it, Facebook does have to show it to quite a few people in order to get some traction to find out who is really resonating with this ad. And then they'll be able to, um, to show it to more people and then hopefully drive more conversions or whatever your objective is. So now we can see that the ads uh, run ads at all time is blue. So you can click on that, hit run ads on the schedule. And here you will see the time zones, or I'm sorry, the days of the week and the different times that you can block off. Uh, this, as you can see here, it does say that it will run on the time zone based on the person seeing the ad. So you don't have to worry if you're targeting people, let's say in California and in New York, if I block off 12 to five, um, people will not see it from 12 to five within the time zone um, that I select. But actually, if I'm, this is the scheduled hour, so it's gonna be the opposite of what I just did, sorry. Um, so if you click down here to highlight um, every single day of the week, you can also choose to unlight it. So I want my ad to run from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. But I don't want it to run, I only want it to run to let's say 9 p.m. on Sunday. So I can unclick those two. So now my ad is running Monday through Saturday from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. And on Sunday, it's running from 6 a.m to 9 p.m. Oh, 9 p.m. So this is when my ad is scheduled to run. So this is something uh, that when you look at your analytics, uh, you can look back at last week's talk and we can talk, you will see how I determined when my ad should run based on my analytics of the people who interact with my profile. So that is, um, a super useful tool on letting when your ads will run so they're not running during hours uh, that are not advantageous to you. And as you can see, as I continue to add in criteria, this is usually gonna go down. Um, that's fine. A great way to get it up is to obviously add more money behind it. And Facebook will actually flag you as well. If you put in a number that is out, kind of outside of the reach that you're normally spending. So 
Uh, if I'm usually only doing a couple hundred dollars and then I decide to throw a thousand dollars at an ad, they'll say, whoa, 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 are you like, did you mean to do that extra zero? So it's kind of just their way to make sure that um, they're, they're keeping the integrity of the platform. So the audience, this is where we get fun, right? So you can create an audience. Um, so like we could do create new, and this is where the custom audience is and the lookalike audience. But if we're just going to make a core audience, um, you can go into here and just start putting in your criteria. So let's say that I want to target, um, oops, sorry. I want to target Riverhead. So it defaults to 25 miles around Riverhead, right? But what if I want 50 miles around Riverhead? So this is, this is the radius I want. You can choose for people living or recently in this location. You can choose just living. You can say people recently or traveling to this location. So if I'm somebody, let's say like a vineyard out here, I may want to target people who have recently been in this location or have been traveling to this location. So I want to target um, people who are 50 miles around Riverhead except for I'm not traveling to Connecticut or I'm not doing business in Connecticut currently. So what I can do is switch this to exclude and I can exclude Connecticut. So now my ad is going to be shown to everyone within this radius, within this bubble but not be shown to anybody who is within this red area. I can also choose to exclude, let's say, Nassau County, right? And this is, I know that this hones in on just one particular area, but it is the actual county, um, although it does not map it out like uh, the states do. So you can zoom in and zoom out with this. Uh, and then let's go into age. You can switch this, you can target lower. Um, for us, ethically, we do not target anybody who's younger than 18. But once again, that is completely up to you. Um, and then you can go up to 65 uh, or plus. So if you do 64, that's fine. Uh, genders, you can do uh, men and women specifically, or you can do all. And then this is where we get into the fun stuff. So demographics, interests, and behaviors. So if I'm targeting, what did I say? This was the, the women's expo, right? So let's say I wanna target people who are 25 to 64, who are women, who are interested in, well, we can say that they are married who are interested in entrepreneurship and then if you're getting stuck as you continue to put these in you can actually hit suggestions and it'll give you suggestions based on what you've already put in so i can say that they are small business owners the small business, multimedia enterprises. And as I continue to put more in, this will alter business owner, family, sole proprietorship, parenting, engaged, owner and founder, owner and CEO. And as you can see on the right hand side here and also up here, you have relationship status, you have job titles, you have interests. Uh, so these are all demographics. These are all ways that you can target someone. And as you highlight over it, you'll see on the right hand side, um, it says that people who have listed their job title as executive director in their Facebook profile. So obviously any of this information as far as relationship status or job title does have to be inputted into the platform, um, but you can target people based on that. And then when it comes to interest, it's anybody who's expressed interest or liked pages that have to do with kindergarten, 
um, if they have looked up different types of kindergartens, anything along those lines, um, that is going to be a, a, a target of interest. So let's say with tutoring, we can put in tutors. So anybody who has shown interest in tutoring, um, college sports, some college or in college. So you're not gonna wanna do in college because uh, this is your education level, right? So recruiting, anybody who's recruiting college athletics, because if, especially for my, my tutor friend out there, if somebody is looking to get into um, college for athletics, there's probably a recruiter that's out there looking at them, right? If they are really, really good, that recruiter is going to need that student to meet a certain GPA. So you may want to target the student, target the parent, but then also target a recruiter and be, have some nice synergy there where you're going to work with the recruiter. They're going to find the student athletes. And if the student athletes are not performing well, they can refer you. And usually you'll have some type of like referral um, partnership. So they can refer you business to get that uh, child's grades up. So just a little kind of tip to my tutor friend over there. So you can see here that you can, um, you can base, you can target people based on all different types of demographics, interests, or behaviors. You can also, just like we did with location, you can exclude people who um, like organic farmers, right? So I, I know this doesn't really have much synergy, but um, just to show you some examples of you can exclude people that uh, don't fit into these categories. So keep in mind with your detailed targeting, people have to only match one of these. So don't get too hung, hung up on, oh, I don't wanna put this because it could also be this. Put everything in there as far as your targeting is concerned. Um, and then you'll be able to speak to both people because they only have to really match one. It's great if they match more, but they really only have to match one uh, piece of targeted material. Okay, you can uh, choose to change the languages of your um, of your ads. So we did have some ads that we ran for a client that wanted to have them run in both English and Spanish. So you can do that. Um, this is where the connections lie, which I was talking about earlier, where it's, are they connected to your page? Are they friends of people who like your page? You can exclude people that like your page. Like I said, if you're gonna run a offer for people who are signing up for the first time, anything like that. Um, so that's where you're gonna find the connections. The other uh, great thing is you can save this audience because right now you're probably like, Kelsey, I have to fill this in every single time you don't. So don't worry about it. Uh, you can hit save this audience and then you will be able to name it. So I will say women's expo Riverhead, oops, Riverhead 50 miles plus interest. So this way I know if I want to use this particular audience again, this is the audience I want to use. If I were to do something just that just said women's expo, I may be running several different events that have different interests for, um, for that specific client. So I want to, you really want to try to get specific, obviously in short form. Uh, so you know which audience you're using and then you're going to click save. I'm not going to click save on this because we don't need to do that. Um, and then when you're ready to use this audience again, you can go to, where's my use saved audiences? Here we go, you can go to use saved audiences. And this is where you will find the different audiences that you have saved um, to use in your next ad campaign. This uh, is a great area right here, optimization for delivery. So this is basically the action that I want people to take. So if you have a pixel set up, you can have landing page views where uh, I want people to see this ad that are most likely to look at the landing page, click on the link that, um, that I'm offering, have a daily unique reach, which is people are gonna see it one time a day. And then there's also impressions. So the difference between reach and impressions 
uh, reach is the amount of people that th your ad is, go is going to touch. Impressions are the amount of times people are going to see it. So if I, like I said, with the curling iron, I saw that ad up to five times a day. So I would count as one reach and five impressions. And if you have any questions about that, um, you can go back and watch last week's um, chat because I talked about it more in there. Now, Facebook does not want you to know about certain things. So when you're going through this, if you forget anything that I've talked about, always just pop these open because they have a tendency to hide things that could be, excuse me, advantageous for you. Like when you are charged, this is super important. So for anybody who's looking on the ad set, when we're filling all this in, it is going to be at the very, very bottom. Ooh. And you're gonna wanna, where it says optimi optimization for ad delivery, go to show more, op show more options. When you get charged, this is impression. So you get charged every single time this shows up in someone's newsfeed. Depending on what you choose for your objective, you cannot do this with reach or brand awareness. Um, which is one of the reasons why I like traffic as well, because you get the bigger bang for your buck. I want to get charged when somebody clicks on my ad. So now this is going to be um, better for my dollar amount, better for my spend, because it's not every time someone is seeing my ad, it's every time somebody is taking action on my ad. So those are two very big things. It's an it's a passive versus an active. So I want people to actually click on that link and go to whatever page it is that I want them to go to. Okay, I'm gonna try to finish this up real quick so I can get to a couple of questions. So Kira, just so you know, I'm coming to you soon, lady. Um, okay, so this is where you're actually going to create the ad. So you'll see your Facebook page here. Um, you do want to have your Instagram account connected if you want to run them on um, these same, if you want to run them both on the platform, you can, like I said, just run on Facebook. You can just run on Instagram. Um, here is where you're creating your ad. Like I said, the single image carousel or collection. So um, we'll just go a single image for now. An instant experience is that uh, mobile experience I was talking about where you could open it up. You can have somebody open it up and it's almost like a landing page on their mobile. So here, this is where you're going to be able to make your creative. So here it says sli create slideshow. This is where you're gonna upload several images or you can create a video. They do give you several options within the platform in order to create these different videos. So you would upload your images and they've got a bunch of different temp templated forms uh, where you can create videos easily on here. You also have um, Canva, I told you is another great way to, Canva, InShot and iMovie are all other ways that you can make ads, but you can scroll through this and see maybe there is a uh, template that you like that you want to use. So that does make it easy to uh, create your logo on here. You will just up upload your images and then choose your template and then you'll go forward and it'll help walk you through creating your ad. Uh, same thing with creating the slideshow. You can choose your different forms, how you would like it to go. Uh, you can do square or vertical. So depending on if you want something in the feed, you're gonna do something square. If you're looking for more in the stories, you're gonna do vertical. Um, and then you can do up to three to 10 images. So let's just say that I um, have an ad or a photo that I want to upload and I don't need either of those. You're gonna click add media. You can add an image or a video. I'll say I want to add a video. Uh, it does allow you to access the other accounts. So if you have uh, videos on your business page or you have um, a video, let's say like on a YouTube or something, I don't recommend outsourcing to YouTube, but let's say you have something in a Dropbox, you can put your URL and it'll pull from that. Um, but these are videos that I have just uploaded. So let's say we'll use this one, we're hiring. And then you can choose to alter it and crop it to fit within each space. 
So if you choose this horizontal, you'll see that it goes around here. This is what it is going to look like if you choose to crop it to those dimensions in the horizontal. But I don't want to do that because you're missing the main chunk of my ad. So if I crop it to horizontal, that's really all you're seeing and you're not getting the full picture, right? Vertical, same thing. You can play it. You're not seeing all my text. So I'm not going to choose those. But actually, horizontal wasn't that bad. So I'll say that we're going to crop it to the horizontal and I'm going to use the square. The square is always going to be the default because this is what's going to fit in majority of the locations. So then I'm going to click done. And now my ad is uploading. On the right hand side over here, I'm going to be able to see all of the different areas that this is going to show up. If you see a red kind of stop sign, that means that it is not formatted for that specific. So if you go over it, so Facebook right column, this is not formatted for Facebook right column and therefore will not show up there. So right now this ad is formatted for 15 different placements. So we're gonna continue to scroll down. We have primary text, so I could say, this is great. And this is going to show up on the very top here. My headline is going to be down on the bottom. So my headline is going to say, hi, my name is, and that's going to be in bold. And then the description is, we'll just put my name, Kelsey. And that's going to be underneath. Um, this bold text is going to be able to go for two lines. This uh, non-bold text underneath is only going to go for, I think it's like 32 characters, um, but it will cut off and it'll give the dot, dot, dot. So I want this to go to my website. My website is um, www.startmedianny.com. Once I fill that in, I will, my error message will go away and you will see that it shows up here. If you don't want it to say starkmedia.com, you can choose to have a different link displayed, but I like people to see my, um, my website. You can then also change the button, the call to action button from learn more to all of these different ones here. So um, I like to go to a contact us. And by the way, this can be a specific page on your website. So I can do, I can send them directly to the contact us page, right? And then the call to action is the contact us. So those match up. And then this is where you're going to find your pixel. We don't have time today to talk about pixels. That's a whole other thing. Um, but like I said, this is where you're going to find the access to copy that piece of code and put it on your website. And then finally, you're going to hit publish. I'm not going to do that. But once you hit publish, you'll see this switches to in in review. And then uh, usually you will get an email within a couple hours saying that your ad has either gotten approved or uh, not approved. It's gotten rejected. And then in which case you have to go in and see um, what ad um, what's wrong with your ad and which of the best practices it is violating that got you to be rejected. All right, Kira's got questions. Okay, Jane asked, I design and create jewelry. What do you suggest as an approach with Facebook and Instagram? Um, great, so show your jewelry, definitely, but then also show how you create the jewelry. People love behind the scenes. They absolutely love, love, love behind the scenes. So if they get to see your creative process, they're really going to enjoy that and they're going to see the love and the uh, effort that goes into these pieces of jewelry, which are going to make them seem uh, more valuable, right? They're gonna really appreciate everything that goes into it. Um, so Kira, was that our only question? Oh, lovely. All right, well, three minutes left. Woo! You packed in a lot. <laughs> I told you I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, well, if nobody has any other questions and I think we'll obviously let Kelsey take a drink. 
<laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, well, it's much needed. <laughs> well, it's a lot of talking. Uh, sorry, I did say that I was going to put up where you could email me and all that sure. stuff. So, there we go. Thanks for coming. <laughs> all right, so we'll give everybody a minute to jot that down. And, um, oh, uh, I'm sorry, we just, Oh, it looks like we just had one more question in, but I, I thought you answered it. What is a good amount of pixels for photos? Um, okay, so pixels, it really depends on which size that you're doing. So you can actually, it's very, very easy to Google um, the sizes of each, uh, each part of Facebook and Instagram. So stories are going to be a different size then the newsfeed, which is going to be a different size from the um, in-app articles, which is going to be different from the right and the left-hand side. So it's super, super easy uh, to Google. But if you want to send me an email, I can just send you a page that has all the different sizes on it. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kelsey. And thank you, Kira. And thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a great day, everybody. You too. <laughs> Thanks.